In this video, you're going to take a quick look at converting images to pencil art in Corel Draw. You won't even have to open Photo Paint, go to Photoshop, or bother with any of that. In fact, it's one of the most powerful aspects of the Corel Draw graphics suite, and actually the Corel Draw application, is it's very effective with raster or bitmap type images. And most of the people that are dealing with these type of images are by default going to photos going to Photoshop when there's little understanding of the true power that CorelDRAW possesses relating to working with raster or bitmap graphics. For me, workflow, speed of work is everything, and the access that I have to all of these raster effects directly in DRAW enables me to create high-end, off-the-wall artwork and designs in minutes. And we're going to see that in this particular session. We'll take just a minute here to very quickly create this off-the-wall type of tiger head design you see over here in this yellow comp or mock-up. And you can see we've got the face of the line, kind of like hand-drawn art. And then we've got some background going on here as halftones to create a background off of which we can pop or bring some contrast to the face of the tiger on the shirt. Now, with directed garment, not an issue. With screen printing, we've got a basic two-color design, but yet we've got some really off-the-wall effects going on here. A couple of different images I converted with these techniques. Now, you need to learn about photographs and stuff like that and converting them and tweaking them and making adjustments to them. That's really not a big deal. You can do all that directly in Corel Draw also or Corel Photo Paint. If we zoom in here on this old Miss helmet here, we'll take a look at this. Here's the actual image. Here it is converted to a pencil sketch. Now I could have put some more time into this and brought out some more contrast and depth. We can see this looks exactly like somebody went and drew it by hand. Same thing with this football team here. Great for your sports graphics, things like that. Very keeping with the type of designs we're seeing popular in the market today. And looks exactly like somebody cross-hashed it or drew it by hand. Same thing with the tiger down here. A couple of different effects going on directly out of draw. Able to cre create these type of designs in minutes on the fly. And that's really what I like about working with the Corel Draw Graphics Suite or Graphics Application. So we'll go ahead and take a look at our tiger here. And I'm just going to go ahead and select him. I'll pull him off to one side and we'll go ahead and zoom in here and take a look at what we're doing. Go ahead and resize that a bit. And we'll go ahead and we'll do some different things with this to get started. Now, these are kind of tricky. I've learned all these tricks over the years working and experimenting with the application. A lot of these things, as I said, you see people by default going to Photoshop. Well, in Corel Draw, you really don't have to do that. It only takes two or three steps. If you understand your applications, how to work with them, you're going to be able to do amazing things with them. Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, CorelDRAW, all of them, they're all great applications. Once you know how to use them, you can do incredible things with them. So we'll go ahead with this tiger here. And what I want to do is, first thing I want to do is I want to go to Bitmaps and Mode. And I'm going to convert this tiger to a grayscale, as you can see here. Now, before I convert to pencil, go ahead and zoom in here and take a look here. What are raster graphics? We'll cover that quickly for those of you that are new here. And you see as we zoom in here, we've got these little squares. Well, raster graphics are pixels, and vector graphics are obviously the lines and nodes. And what we want to do is we want to manipulate these pixels and convert them into hand-drawn art. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and first change our tone curve in this particular graphic. I don't like, I want some more white. I want my white to pop out a little bit more. So when I make my conversion, I'll have better transparency associated with this graphic when I convert to a monochrome. So what I'll do is, is I'll actually go to effects and adjust and I'll go to tone curve and I'm just going to make a slight adjustment. I'll come over here to the left hand corner, go over to the right just a bit do the same up in the top, and that'll just increase my current contrast just a bit, and I'll select OK. And it'll take, as I've said many times, a second to process. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this bitmap, go to bitmap, and I'm going to go to mode, and I'm going to go to invert. Not mode, excuse me. I want to go to effects, transform, and invert. That'll take just a second. The next thing I want to do is I want to go to bitmaps and artistic strokes, and then I'm going to go to scraper board. Now you'll see where I'm going with this in just a minute. Go ahead and get my preview here, and I'll bring this out here. I'll left click. I'll take this little hand cursor I have, and I'll right click, and I can zoom in and zoom out with it. I can also move the image up and down and around in here with that. I'm going to right click and zoom in just a bit. I'm going to go ahead and take a preview of this. And if it weren't for the tutorial, I'd probably spend a few more minutes tweaking my images and setting them up before I want to do these conversions. But because we've got a high-resolution image, it's set up at 447 DPI, as we can see down here in the bottom. It'll take just a minute to process. Now, once that's finished processing, I can zoom in and see that here in my white areas, 
I'll start getting kind of like a scratched out effect. Now I do this inverted because this scratched out effect is what I'll be working with to convert back. And you can see there it is now that I clicked on preview. Now you can change the density of these strokes or these scratches and the size of them. Very important. You want to pay attention. Now there's a critical setting. I had this set to color and scrape, but I inverted. So I'm using my white. So I want to come here and left click on my white, change this to a white, then go to preview and give that a minute to process because I'm working from an invert and I found that I get better results coming off of this invert than I do working with going off the straight image. And you'll see where that goes in just a minute. But for the tutorial, we'll go ahead and go with this. Remember, you can experiment with these densities and size settings. The best thing to do is take a few minutes and convert a few images and experiment, see what the difference is. Now you can see that my effects are actually scraped out of my white because I'm dealing with an invert or a negative. So I'll select OK and we'll let that process. Now once that is finished processing, you can see here I've got this tiger image. It doesn't look very good. It's really kind of black and white and scratched out and it's a negative. But you can see I've got these lines in here that look kind of like cross hatching or pencil lines, but they're inverted. So all I need to do is go to effects, transform, and invert. And that'll take just a second to process. My next step, very simple. These are very hard lines. I want to soften these up so they look like hand-drawn art. Just simply go to bitmaps, blur, select Gaussian blur, and I'll actually go with, let's say, two pixels here and select OK. And that'll take just a minute to process. And what I'll have is I'll have a grayscale bitmap on layer one that looks kind of like pencil or hand-drawn art, as you can see there. Now, so here very quickly, I've gone from my photograph to a pencil-type look. Now, if you want to get more of a hand-drawn look or adjust that, as I said, you can do that with those settings in that scrape board. Next thing I want to do, very simple to set up my design, I'm just going to go to Bitmaps and Creative. Then I'll go to Frame, and I'll select a frame to work with here just to kind of put a border around that image really quick. Kind of off the wall stuff we can do with Corel here. And actually on this one, maybe I'll go with the star this time. And we'll go with the starburst for this particular tutorial. I had a different one for the other tutorial. That'll take just a minute to process and put the border around my tiger. And very quickly here I'll have a kind of off the wall, hand drawn type of artwork. And once that's finished processing, I'll just go ahead and select OK off of my preview here and we'll let that process and now I've got a completely off the wall type of starburst tiger design that I've created minutes in Corel Draw just by using the simple conversion methods and then if I want to go ahead and set up a mock-up I can just grab my t-shirt here and I'll go ahead and I'll right click here and select extract contents because I had that power clipped inside sort of like an all over design actually what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and power clip this inside of my design so I'll just right click Drag over release on top of my shirt, select power clip inside, and I'll right click, go to edit contents. I'll take this, move this off to one side, and I'll go ahead and delete these two objects that I have here set up on top of the t-shirt. I'll bring this off and set it off to one side. If I was setting up for like an all over print or something kind of really off the wall, I could just go ahead and set this right here. Now what I want to do, I've got my shed shading set up, and I don't want to get into the comp right now, but I'll go order, and I'll select the back of layer. I'll right click, go to finish editing this level, and you can see here very quickly I've been able to set up a completely off the wall tiger hand drawn type artwork design working with raster effects, not vector effects, in the Corel Draw application. Of course, Corel Draw also does come with the full photo paint. We can do a lot more things with our images and effects and artistic looks and things like that directly in photo paint. But being able to create these type of effects in a matter of minutes is one of the incredible parts of the CorelDRAW application and the CorelDRAW graphics suite. So I hope this helps, gives you some ideas for creating some hand-drawn type art look, artwork looking designs like we're seeing very popular in the market today.